welcome back to Rain Reads, and welcome to any first time subscribers or first time viewers. Um, thank you for checking out my channel. Today we are reading part 5 of The Little Prince, starting from chapter 21. Let's begin. 21. It was then that the fox appeared. Good morning, said the fox. Good morning, the little prince answered politely, though when he turned around, he saw nothing. I'm here, the voice said, under the apple tree. Who are you? the little prince asked. You're very pretty. I'm a fox, the fox said. Come and play with me, the little prince proposed. I'm feeling so sad. I can't play with you, the fox said. I'm not tamed. Oh, excuse me, said the little prince. But upon reflection, he added, what does tamed mean? You're not from around here, the fox said. What are you looking for? I'm looking for people, said the little prince. What does tamed mean? People, said the fox, have guns and they hunt. It's quite troublesome. And they also raise chickens. That's the only interesting thing about them. Are you looking for chickens? No, said the little prince. I'm looking for friends. What does tamed mean? It's something that's been too often neglected. It means to create ties. To create ties? That's right, the fox said. For me, you're only a little boy, just like a hundred thousand other little boys. And I have no need of you. And you have no need of me either. For you, I'm only a fox, like a hundred thousand other foxes. But if you tame me, we'll need each other. You'll be the only boy in the world for me. I'll be the only fox in the world for you. I'm beginning to understand, the little prince said. There's a flower. I think she's tamed me. Possibly, the fox said. On earth, one sees all kinds of things. Oh. This isn't on earth, the little prince said. The fox seemed quite intrigued. On another planet? Yes. Are there hunters on that planet? No. Now that's interesting. And chickens? No. Nothing's perfect, sighed the fox. But, re but he returned to his idea. My life is monotonous. I hunt chickens people hunt me. All chickens are just alike, and all men are just alike. So I'm rather bored. But if you tame me, my life will be filled with sunshine. I'll know the sound of footsteps that will be different from all the rest. Other footsteps send me back underground. Yours will call me out of my burrow like music. And then look, you see the wheat fields over there? I don't eat bread. For me, wheat is of no use whatever. Wheat fields say nothing to me, which is sad. But you have hair the color of gold, so it will be wonderful once you've tamed me. The wheat, which is golden, will remind me of you, and I'll love the sound of the wind in the wheat. The fox fell silent and stared at the little prince for a long while. Please, tame me, he said. I'd like to. The little prince replied, but I haven't much time. I have friends to find and so many things to learn. The only things you learn are the things you tame, said the fox. People haven't time to learn anything. They buy things ready-made in stores. But since there are no stores where you can buy friends, people no longer have friends. If you want a friend, tame me. What do I have to do? asked the little prince. You have to be very patient, the fox answered. 
First, you'll sit down a little ways away from me, over there in the grass. I'll watch you out of the corner of my eye, and you won't say anything. Language is the source of misunderstandings. But day by day, you'll be able to sit a little closer. The next day, the little prince returned. It would have been better to return at the same time, the fox said. For instance, if you come at four in the afternoon, I'll begin to be happy by three. The closer it gets to four, the happier I'll feel. By four, I'll be all excited and worried. I'll discover what it costs to be happy. But if you come at any old time, I'll never know when I should prepare my heart. There must be rights. What's a right? asked the little prince. That's another thing that's been too often neglected, said the fox. It's the fact that one day is different from the other days, one hour from the other hours. My hunters, for example, have a right. They dance with the village girls on Thursdays. So Thursday is a wonderful day. I can take a stroll all the way to the vineyards. If the hunters danced whenever they chose, the days would all be just alike, and I'd have no holiday at all. That was how the little prince tamed the fox. And when the time to leave was near, Ah, the fox said, I shall weep. It's your own fault, the little prince said. I never wanted to do you any harm, but you insisted that I tame you. Yes, of course, the fox said. But you're going to weep, said the little prince. Yes, of course, the fox said. Then you get nothing out of it? I get something, the fox said, because of the color of the wheat. Then he added, Go look at the roses again. You'll understand that yours is the only rose in all the world. Then come back to say goodbye, and I'll make you the gift of a secret. The little prince went to look at the roses again. You're not at all like my rose. You're nothing at all yet, he told them. No one has tamed you, and you haven't tamed anyone. You're the way my fox was. He was just a fox like a hundred thousand others, but I've made him my friend, and now he's the only fox in all the world. And the roses were humbled. You're lovely, but you're empty, he went on. One couldn't die for you. Of course, an ordinary passerby would think my rose looked just like you, but my rose, all on her own, is more important than all of you together, since... since since she's the one I've watered, since she's the one I put under glass, since she's the one I sheltered behind a screen, since she's the one for whom I killed the caterpillars, except the two or three for butterflies, since she's the one I listened to when she complained or when she boasted or even sometimes when she said nothing at all, since she's my rose. And he went back to the fox. Goodbye, he said. Goodbye, said the fox. Here's my secret. It's quite simple. One sees clearly only with the heart. Anything essential is invisible to the eyes. Anything essential is invisible to the eyes, the little prince repeated in order to remember. It's the time you spent on your rose that makes your rose so important. It's the time I spent on my rose, the little prince repeated, in order to remember. People have forgotten this truth, the fox said, but you mustn't forget it. You become responsible forever for what you've tamed. You're responsible for your rose. I'm responsible for my rose, the little prince repeated, in order to remember. 22. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the railway switchman. What is it that you do here? asked the little prince. I sort the travelers into bundles of a thousand, the switchman said. I dispatch the trains that carry them, sometimes to the right, sometimes to the left. 
and a brightly lit express train came roaring like thunder shook the switchman's cabin. What a hurry they're in, said the little prince. What are they looking for? Not even the engineer on the locomotive knows, the switchman said, and another brightly lit express train thundered by in the opposite direction. Are they coming back already? asked the little prince. It's not the same ones, the switchman said. It's an exchange. They weren't satisfied, were they? Where they were? They weren't satisfied where they were? asked the little prince. No one is ever satisfied where he is, the switchman said, and a third brightly lit express train thundered past. Are they chasing the first travelers? asked the little prince. They're not chasing anything, the switchman said. They're sleeping in there, or else they're yawning. Only the children are pressing their noses against the window panes. Only the children know what they're looking for, said the little prince. They spend their time on a rag doll and it becomes very important. And if it's taken away from them, they cry. They're lucky, the switchman said. 23. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the sales clerk. This was a sales clerk who sold pills invented to quench thirst. Swallow one a week, and you no longer feel any need to drink. Why do you sell these pills? They save so much time, the sales clerk said. Experts have calculated that you can save 53 minutes a week. And what do you do with those 53 minutes? Whatever you like. If I have 53 minutes to spend as I liked, the little prince said to himself, I'd walk very slowly toward a water fountain. 24. It was now the eighth day since my crash landing in the desert, and I'd listened to the story about the sales clerk as I was drinking the last drop of my water supply. Ah, I said to the little prince, your memories are very pleasant, but I haven't yet repaired my, my plane. I have nothing left to drink, and I too would be glad to walk very slowly toward a water fountain. My friend the fox told me, little fellow, this has nothing to do with the fox. Why? Because we're going to die of thirst. The little prince didn't follow my reasoning and answered me. It's good to have had a friend, even if you're going to die. Myself, I'm very glad to have had a fox for a friend. He doesn't realize the danger, I said to myself. He's never hungry or thirsty. A little sunlight is enough for him. But the little prince looked at me and answered my thought. I'm thirsty too. Let's find a well. I made an exasperated gesture. It is absurd looking for a well at random in the vastness of the desert, but even so, we started walking. When we had walked for several, hour, for several hours in silence, night fell and stars began to appear. I noticed them as in a dream, being somewhat feverish on account of my thirst. The little prince's words danced in my memory. So you're thirsty too, I asked. But he didn't answer my question. He merrily said to me, water can also be good for the heart. I didn't understand his answer, but I said nothing. I knew by this time that it was no use questioning him. He was tired. He sat down. I sat down next to him. And after a silence, he spoke again. The stars are beautiful because of a flower you don't see. I answered, yes, of course. And without speaking another word, I stared at the ridges of sand in the moonlight. The desert is beautiful, the little prince added. And it was true. I have always loved the desert. You sit down on a sand dune, you see nothing, you hear nothing, and yet something shines, something sings in that silence. What makes the desert beautiful, the little prince said, is that it hides a well somewhere. I was surprised by suddenly understanding that mysterious radiance of the sand. When I was a little boy, I lived in an old house, 
and there was a legend that a treasure was buried in it somewhere. Of course, no one was ever able to find the treasure. Perhaps no one even searched? But it cast a spell over that whole house. My house hid a secret in the depths of its heart. Yes, I said to the little prince, whether it's a house or the stars or the desert, what makes them beautiful is invisible. I'm glad, he said, you agree with my fox. As the little prince was falling asleep, I picked him up in my arms and started walking again. I was moved. It was as if I was carrying a fragile treasure. It actually seemed to me there was nothing more fragile on earth. By the light of the moon, I gazed at that pale forehead, those closed eyes, those locks of hair trembling in the wind, and I said to myself, what I'm looking at is only a shell. What's most important is invisible. As his lips parted in a half smile, I said to myself again, what moves me so deeply about this sleeping little prince is his loyalty to a flower, the image of a rose shining within him like the flame within a lamp, even when he's asleep. And I realized he was even more fragile than I had thought. Lamps must be protected. A gust of wind can blow them out. And walking on like that, I found the well at daybreak. 25. The little prince said, People start out in express trains, but they no longer know what they're looking for. Then they get all excited and rush around in circles. And he added, It's not worth the trouble. The well we had come to was not at all like the wells of the Sahara. The wells of the Sahara are no more than holes dug in the sand. This one looked more like a village well, but there was no village here, and I thought I was dreaming. It's strange, I said to the little prince. Everything is ready. The pulley, the bucket, and the rope. He laughed, grasped the rope, and set the pulley working. And the pulley groaned the way an old weather vane groans when the wind has been asleep a long time. Hear that? said the little prince. We've awakened this well and it's singing. I didn't want him to tire himself out. Let me do that, I said to him. It's too heavy for you. Slowly I hoisted the bucket to the edge of the well. I sat it down with great care. The song of the pulley continued in my ears and I saw the sun glisten on the still trembling water. I'm thirsty for that water, said the little prince. Let me drink some. And I understood what he'd been looking for. I raised the bucket to his lips. He drank, eyes closed. It was as sweet as a feast. That water was more than merely a drink. It was born of our walk beneath the stars, of the song, of the pulley, of the effort of my arms. It did the heart good, like a present. When I was a little boy, the Christmas tree lights, the music of midnight mass, the tenderness of people's smiles made up in the same way the whole radiance of the Christmas present I received. People where you live, the little prince said, grow 5,000 roses in one garden, yet they don't find what they're looking for. They don't find it, I answered, and yet what they're looking for could be found in a single rose or a little water. Of course, I answered, and the little prince added, but eyes are blind. You have to look with the heart. I had drunk the water. I could breathe easy now. The sand at daybreak is honey colored, and that color was making me happy too. Why then did I also feel so sad? You must keep your promise, said the little prince, sitting up again beside me. What promise? You know, a muzzle for my sheep. I'm responsible for this flower. I took my drawings out of my pocket. The little prince glanced at them and laughed as he said, Your baobabs look more like cabbages. Oh, I have been so proud of the baobabs. Your fox, his ears look more like horns and they're too long and he laughed again you're being unfair my little prince I said 
I never knew how to draw anything but boas from the inside and boas from the outside. Oh, that, that'll be all right, he said. Children understand. So then I drew a muzzle, and with a heavy heart, I handed it to him. You've made plans I don't know about. But he didn't answer. You know, my fall to earth, tomorrow will be the anniversary. Then, after a silence, he continued, I landed very near here, and he blushed. And once again, without understanding why, I felt a strange grief. However, a question occurred to me. Then it wasn't by accident that on the morning I met you, eight days ago, you were walking that way, all alone, a thousand miles from any inhabited region? Were you returning to the place where you fell to earth? The little prince blushed again. And I added, hesitantly, perhaps on account of the anniversary? The little prince blushed once more. He never answered questions, but when someone blushes, doesn't that mean yes? Ah, I said to the little prince, I'm afraid. But he answered, you must get to work now. You must get back to your engine. I'll wait here. Come back tomorrow night. But I wasn't reassured. I remembered the fox. You risk tears if you let yourself be tamed. And we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and following along. If there are any words you didn't understand, or if you have any concerns or suggestions or any questions at all, um, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for future readings. Thank you, and take care. Bye.